In this video, we're going to explain the wireless access protocol, and that is the Carrier Sense Multiple Access with Collision Avoidance Protocol, the CMSA slash CA. And we're going to explain it with and without request to send, clear to send. Well, let's just start first with a little bit of information of what is this data actually traveling over when we use Wi-Fi. Yeah, with physical cables, we know it's traveling down an actual cable. With Wi-Fi, it's traveled over what's called a frequency, and we typically refer to these frequencies as channels. So here we can see a number of channels, and for example, channel 6 is broadcasting its Wi-Fi signal on the frequency 2.437 gigahertz. So if your wireless access point, your home router, was broadcasting on channel 6, then any other device in your house, which was also connected to channel 6, will be able to send and receive information on your wireless network on that channel within your, within your LAN. Now, this does have certain implications, because a channel has a certain size or range. Here you go, each channel is 22 megahertz in size, and as you can see, this overlaps. So if we're on channel 6, we get a bit of a bleed through or a bit of kind of overlapping of channels 5 and 7. Now, modern wireless networking copes with this to a certain degree as it sorts things out with filtering. But let's say uh, both your neighbours and the houses across the road from you were all broadcasting on channel 5. That's a, uh, a lot of traffic which is bleeding through over into part of your channel. However, you are perfectly capable of changing your channel to, say, channel 10. And you might find, actually, that this speeds up your Wi-Fi as it's on a channel which is less used than those around you. Now, here's the complete range of channels available to Wi-Fi, and this is beyond the level of the specification for A-level. All you really need to know before we move on is that um, Wi-Fi signals are transmitted on channels, and channels have a frequency range of around 22 megahertz. So, I'm about to send something from my uh, mobile phone out onto channel 6. Well, the question is, is what's the protocol behind whether this channel is actually available to receive my data at the moment? Maybe it's busy, maybe it's receiving lots of data from other tablets in the house and other computers. Or, you know, maybe it's idle and this would be an ideal time to send a request. Well, this is the protocol that deals with it. It's the Carrier Sense Multiple Access with Collision Avoidance. And we're going to look at it first without the request to send, clear to send. So in CSMA CA without RTS CTS, if a device is ready to send some data, it starts, it assembles the, uh, the packet or the frame of data it wants to send, and then it asks the question, is the channel idle? So a little signal will go out from the device, uh, on, say, channel 6, and it will ask the Wi-Fi network, are you currently available? Is this a good time to be sending you data? And at the simplest level, if it says yes, then it gets sent. And if it says no, it simply waits a period of time and then checks if the frequency is, is less busy to send again. An enhancement of this protocol adds on the RTS-CTS, that's request to send, clear to send. So let's look again. So we start and our device says, I want to send some information. So it assembles the information it wants to send in a frame. And then it asks on the channel, is this a good time? Are we, are we, is this a good time to send? Are you idle? Now, if it says no, it just waits like before. However, if the channel is idle, then this time it actually sends a request to send. So before this message just goes blindly off across the network on the frequency, it first sends a small request to send. This is received, and then it gets responded to with a message that says, yes, we are clear to send. And if, it, if you get back the clear to send signal, then the data is transmitted. If it's not, you know the network is busy, and again we enter this wait period. Now, the hidden node problem uh, mentioned and illustrated here is a great example of uh, why we use these protocols and why we typically try to use one that has the um, request to send, clear to send. 
So here we can see we have a couple of nodes uh, wirelessly connected on our network. Now, node A can see the wireless access protocol because it's in range. And node B can see the wireless access protocol. But node A is not able to see node B or vice versa. They're out of range of each other. Now, on the whole, this wouldn't be a major problem until, of course, node A and B both try to submit data wirelessly to the wireless access point at the same time. They might do this because, as far as no aid is concerned, node B is hidden. It doesn't know about it, and vice versa. And, of course, if we just use CSMACD, we would end up with collisions of data. By adding this request to send and clear to send signal, node A doesn't need to make any assumptions about how many other nodes there are, if they're hidden, whether they're there. It just adds that extra layer of protection and says, I'd like to send something. The wireless access point checks everything else that it can see, and if it's clear, lets node A it can proceed.